So if you take a list of open problems in math, let's say aliens kidnap planet Earth and tell mathematicians, okay, within a year you have to produce a solution. I'm not sure we would be able to. The difference between research math and other activities is that in research math you can be a genius 10% of the time and a full 90% of the time and life will be great. In most other activities, if you perform like that, you'll be fired or potentially worse. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science at Princeton University. I am teaching mostly theoretical computer science here, and I've been here for just over 10 years. I've been married to my wife Anna for 14 years. She's a clinical psychologist. We have two kids. Eva is six and Ellie is four. In my research, I'm working on developing theoretical computer science and connecting it to as many other areas of knowledge as possible. Communication complexity considers scenarios where there are two or more parties performing computation, and it is specifically concerned with the amount of communication they need to perform between them. I worked on introducing and developing tools from information theory to get new results in communication complexity and new techniques for proving precise estimates on the amount of communication needed. Here is an example of a data manipulation problem involving communication complexity, starring our two lovely children. Say there are two players, they are called Alice and Bob. Each has a bag of animals. The goal is to figure out if Alice and Bob have an animal in common or not, while communicating as little as possible. They could just start naming animals one by one, until all the animals have been named or until Alice and Bob discover that they have the same animal. This is actually suboptimal, you can do much better. The key is to break the communication into many little problems, asking, okay, do they have a hippo in common, do they have a panda in common, and so on. Using information complexity, the most important part of this proof is to correctly define the quantity of information we are interested in, where less is better. The goal is to figure out the answer while each learns as little as possible from the other about what they have. Let's say that Alice and Bob are trying to decide if they both have a panda. One solution is for both Alice and Bob to yell panda or no panda. This can be improved. If Alice yells no panda, there is no reason for Bob to reveal that he has a panda and not some other animal. So we can have Alice say panda or no panda. And only if she says panda, then Bob chimes in. Panda. It turns out that you can do even better with more back and forth communication. We can calculate exactly the fractional number of bits we need in order to decide whether we have a panda in common or not. Then you take this fraction, multiply it by the number of decisions you need to make, and you have the answer. Within communication complexity with two parties, this worked out pretty nicely. And the current frontier is to see how much it can be extended past two parties, or if there is an actual stumbling block. One potential long-term goal for computational complexity theory, and it's not clear if it's even possible, is to come up with conservation laws for computation. For example, we know that you cannot power a city with one diesel generator, because of conservation of energy. You can compute how many watts you produce with a diesel generator, compute consumption, and see that it's not even on the same scale. Hence, it's impossible. We know that you cannot store the entire database of all the pictures on the internet on a smartphone by conservation laws from information theory. The basic unit now is bits instead of watts. A smartphone is capable of storing a certain number of bits. All the pictures on the internet take some number of bits that is much higher. It would be amazing if we had such conservation laws for computation. For instance, could you break cryptographic systems using a smartphone? You would hope that it would say something like you have to try all the keys, which is computationally demanding, so it will take a very, very long time on a small device. For this, you'd need some kind of a conservation law. To succeed, I think you need to surround yourself with people who can teach you a lot. And not just in terms of mathematics, but more generally to become a better person. 
Actually, I could imagine myself being happy not doing math. I think that makes me a better mathematician.